Okay, we're finally on part five of the parabola. I'm going to look at number 60. This just gives you some information, wants you to fill in the blanks, but um, let's see what they tell you. And just kind of, if you can, graph what you know. It says, if the directrix of a parabola is given by x equals 6. So let's see what that looks like. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here's my, this is my directrix. Right there. Remember your directrix is a line. Okay, and it also says the focus is 2, 1. So here's my focus right here. This is at 2, 1, and there's your focus. So then it wants to know what the vertex is. Well, remember, first of all, here's what I know just from this. I know I've got a parabola that looks like this because your focus always sits kind of inside the bowl. So I've got this, okay, I have a parabola. And I know that <clears throat> my vertex is exactly between these two. So if this is 6 and this is 2, I want halfway between there. Well, you can do 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So it should be 1, 2, 3, it should be right there is your vertex. So notice it's 2, the distance here is 2, which would be your p-value, by the way. This is your distance right here is 2. That always has to be the same. So that's the first blank. It says, so what is your vertex? It would be 4, 1. That would be your vertex. And the p-value is... Now, <clears throat> they have the value negative 2, and that's because you had to go from the vertex, you had to go left 2 to get to your focus. So that's why it's a negative 2 to be your p-value. All right, so let's try 62. <clears throat> let's look what they say real quick. It says the vertex is 4, negative 2. So, you know, this is, I'm such a visual person, so I like to plot this out. Here's 4, negative 2. That's my vertex, and I'm going to just kind of... That's my vertex right there. It also says the focus is 4, negative 7. So there's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 4, negative 7. That right there is my focus, and it's 4, negative 7. Now, by the way, what does that tell me? It tells me my parabola looks like this, okay? This width in here is 5. So, and notice I went down. So my p-value, I don't even know what it asks. What does it ask? But I can tell you my p-value is negative 5. So let me see what it asks. It says, then the directrix is given by what line? Well, gosh, if you went down 5 to get to your focus, you're going to have to go up 5. So just count up 5, or you could add 5. You're going up, so add 5 to that. Negative 2 plus 5 is what, 3? So here should be your directrix, which is the line y equals 3. Okay, so again, you can either just count up 5 or you can add 5 to this. Who cares? So there's your directrix and there's your p-value right there, which is the two blanks they actually ask. Okay, now 64 is actually even easier. 64 tells me the focal diameter, so my focal diameter is 8. So it says, so then what is the focal length? Okay. Um, if the focal diameter is 8, remember what that means, focal diameter, if this is your focus, this is right here, this is 8, and it, so it says, then the focal length is 2 units, okay, so you're going to do this, you're going to have 4p equals 8, so you see p equals 2, so that would be it on number um, Number 64, they're talking about the focal length would be right there. We haven't talked about that one too much. Wouldn't worry big time about that. Okay, let's look at one other one. Let's look at number 70. 70, they want you to write the equation. Here's what they tell me on 70. They tell me the focus is negative 4, 5. And we know the directrix is the line x equals 0. So again, I am so into graphing. <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Here, right here, is my focus. And my directrix is the line x equals zero. So make sure, remember, if it's x equals zero, it's going to look like this. Because it has to hit the x axis. So this is the line x equals zero. So what does that exactly mean? Okay. That means that my vertex is going to be halfway between these two. My vertex is going to be somewhere right in here is your vertex, and it's going to open this way. Okay. 
So think about that. If my focus is the point negative 4, 5, then this is going to have to be negative 2, 5. Okay, <clears throat> right there. And what number is this? This is number 70. Oh, this is actually number 72. I'm like, hmm, my eyeballs looked wrong. Okay, so who cares? So since it opens to the left, this is what I know I've got. Y squared equals 4px. That's if it's at 0, 0. But my vertex I found to be this point, negative 2, 5. So my x value is negative 2. So I'm going to have to make this x plus 2. And my y value is 5, so I'm going to have to make this y minus 5. All I need to know is p. Remember p is this distance right here. And this distance right here was 2. See right here? There's a distance of 2. You can just see that if you count over. So stick a 2 in right here. So my final equation is y minus 5 squared equals 8 times x plus 2. So, oops, I needed to circle that one. Okay, way sloppy. All right, now I wanted to do number 70. So let's do that one real quick. 70 is what I meant to do anyway. So here's my focus. My focus is 5, 3. My vertex is 3, 3. That's what it gives me. So when I jot this out real quick, here's what I've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. Okay. Here right here is my focus. My vertex is at 3, 3. So what does that tell you? It means it's going to open this way. Okay. And there's my vertex. Since it's going to open that way to the right, I know it has to be using this standard equation. Okay? Now, this is if it's at 0, 0, but it's at 3, 3. My y value is 3, so this one's going to have to be y minus 3. Here my x value is 3. Hate that that they use the same thing, but it's going to be x minus 3. All you have to know is p. And remember, p is the distance you move right here. How far did you have to move? Do you see you went two units to the right, a positive 2? You can see there's a distance of 2 here. So again, this p has to be 2. So plug it in there. 4 times 2 is 8. So my final answer is 8x minus 3. That right there is your equation in standard form. Okay, 74. There will be one like this on the test. Okay, so this is the last one of this series here. And this one's really important. This says I've got the vertex of negative 4, 2. And it says it passes through the point 814. And we're going to actually, this is a point on the parabola. It says there's two possible answers. On the test, you only have to give one. Okay, and let's look. Why are there two possible answers? This right here is your vertex. So let's plot that. One, two, three, four, one, two. Here's my vertex. Here's the point, 814. 814 somewhere up here. Okay, here's why there's two answers. First of all, it could be this. Let's do this one first. You realize that? That could be my vertex. This is just a point. It's not one of the endpoints of the lattice rectum. It doesn't tell me anything like that. Or it could have gone like this to the right. So we're going to do both. If it goes up, then I know it is of this form. It has to be the 4x squared. Okay, this is if it's 0, 0. But here's my vertex. Notice my x value is a negative 4, so it's going to be x plus 4. And my y value is 2, so that's going to be y minus 2. Now I need, I would be done if I knew my p value, but I don't know my p value. So what I'm going to have to do is I know this is a point on the graph. This is your x value and this is your y value. So we're going to plug in an 8 right here where you see the x. And we're going to have to solve for p. My y value is 14. So what do I have here? This is going to be 12 squared. You can hear my kids in the background. That's going to be 12. So if I want to solve for p, notice I'm going to divide both sides by 4 times 12. But you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to yell at them here in just a minute. That way all these cancel. So I'm going to get p equals, let's see, 12, we're going to 144 12 times, 4, we're going to 12 3 times. So it looks like I should get p is 3. So go back up here, plug in a 3 right there because you just found p to be 3. So my final answer would be x plus 4 squared equals 12 times y minus 2. That would be one of them. 
okay? Now, what would have happened if I would have done this, but I was guessing it opened to the right? Sometimes it will tell you which direction it opens. If it opens to the right, notice how this is going to change my equation. If it opens to the right, I'm going to use this, okay? Now, that's if it's 0, 0, but my y value on my center is 2. So, not my center, my vertex. And my x value is a negative 4, so it's going to be x plus 4. So y, stick in your point, I can hear my kiss in the back and it's distracting me. Here, plug in a point for your x and your y so you can solve for p. So we're doing the same thing. My y value is 14, so I'm going to plug that in there. My x value is 8, so plug that in there, 8 plus 4. It's looking great. That gives me 12. 12 times squared is 144. This is going to give me 12. Again, you can do this however you want. I'm just going to divide by 4 times 12, both sides. Hopefully you can see it's the same thing as what we got before. These are going to cancel. So I've got P equals, do it again, you're going to get 3 again. So come back up here, plug in a 3. So your final answer would be y minus 2 squared equals 12 times x plus 4. And that should do it. All right, have fun.